Just a couple words about this uh, about this piano. This is a, a Bosendorfer, a nine and a half foot um, imperial grand piano, the largest grand piano in the world, and it's uh, it's it's right here in our conservatory, named in honor of uh, Joanne B. Rothbard, who was a great lover of music, along with her husband Murray. They used to take classes in, in early music at Columbia University. Uh, in between writing treatises on, on history and economics, they were both great great music scholars. So we're very pleased to have this instrument here. Um, Tonight will be, uh, you're fortunate enough to be at the debut performance of Mises the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is opening night. And it's closing night, too. <laughs> 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 um, guaranteed to lose money. Yeah. There's seats over here, y'all. There are four seats over here. Three. Can I see your tickets, please? Can <laughs> uh, am I on my mark? Let me, let me introduce to you uh, Ar Arlene Zenner. She's the, she's the pianist and uh, largely responsible for having produced this. Um, she was engaged in a very interesting thing over the last few years of reviving the Mises songs uh, that uh, the Mises Circle used to sing, translating them into English and making them accessible. So the music you'll hear tonight is, is the real stuff. This is the stuff that was really sung in Vienna uh, by the Mises Circle. So there's nothing phony about this. I mean, it seems, really, 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 it seems like we made all this stuff up, but it's, it's all true. It's all true. Um, uh, light? No, I think that's it. They all have their own light. Let me introduce to you the players. Um, well, after a while, they don't make their entrance for a while, but um, the uh, Paul Sweezy was, uh, was, uh, uh, visited the Mises Seminar uh, back in the 1920s before he uh, converted to Marxism. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, uh, he was a, a typical, typical neoclassical economist from, uh, from, from Harvard. And uh, he's played by, by Hunt Tooley, who will make his interest, uh, entrance a little bit later. I, I told him, for some reason, he reminds me of a Boston Marxist. I wasn't sure why. Um, and then uh, A.W. Stonier was a, was a Fabian socialist. He's, and uh, he's, he's played tonight by Marcus Verheg, who uh, will make his interest, uh, interest a little bit later. Uh, Felix Kaufman is the, is the author of, of all these songs. He wrote the words... Um, <coughs> Is there more space over there that people can sit? Yeah, you can come on. Come on, sir. That's okay. That's okay. Same here. Uh, some more chairs are probably pulled in behind. But Kaufman was a was a was a philosopher, and and he used to write these. There's one more chair over there. If somebody can get there, can th throw somebody in. Um, but but Kaufman was a philosopher, and he wrote all these words, and and he would he would take notes during the seminar. And uh, and come up with songs the next week and pass them out to everybody and get them get everybody singing them. So so um, so Kaufman tonight is being played by our own dear David Gordon. Here he is. So David. Here, here. Everybody says Kaufman was, was a mischievous fellow. Um, <laughs> Gottfried Hobbler was was a was a was a great uh, great friend of Mises um, who. Started somewhat with with Keynesianism, uh, midlife, but also wrote some very good books um, on trade theory and uh, uh, on business cycle theory. And tonight he's played by Tom Di Lorenzo. I haven't read the script yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz Mucklum, uh was very much responsible for for uh, for Human Action having been published. He gave a very positive review of it. I was a good friend of, of Mises. They had their ups and downs, but. Uh, also a great, another great uh, theorist, and he's played uh, by Joseph Salerno. 
And then uh, Hans Meyer um, was a was a problematic figure. And, um, he, he was a, a disciple of Max Weber, a social democrat who um, who who uh, he makes he he makes an appearance in Mises' autobiography. It turns out he got along very well with the um, the people who ran uh, Mises out of Austria. Uh, he thrived under the Nazis, Hans Meyer, and uh, he is played tonight by our own dear Roderick Long. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, we all know at this period, uh, Hayek was a, was a great disciple of, of Mises and, uh, and uh, his successor at the, at the Business Cycle Institute. And there is a song tonight you will hear about the Business Cycle Institute. Um, and and uh, so we thought, when thinking who, who should play Hayek, who else but Walter Block? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our, last, our last player. Please no introduction. Uh, the author of the Mises biography, the man who knows Mises probably better than any living person, um, Guido Hulsman. Should I give you Mises the musical? <laughs> now, come on. You're telling me that the state of society can be deduced from the principle of marginal utility? The claim strikes me as implausible at best. <laughs> no, 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 that's a caricature. We are not here debating the merits of anarchism. <laughs> <laughs> we are merely saying that through marginal utility, properly understood, we can demonstrate the merits of market economics in ways that eluded our predecessors. It might be the very foundation of liberalism itself. Well, I suppose anything properly understood can be the foundation of anything else properly understood. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, define me. Yes, professor. Yes, professor. <laughs> Um, slightly irritated by the fact that my former collaborators speak with this Yankee accent. <laughs> but as to substance, the trouble with early liberalism and the reason for its intellectual failure, I believe, was its lack of a purely scientific foundation. One rooted not in any data or moral claims, but in the rational analysis of the acting man. Yes, 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 yes. If I may be so bold as to disagree with everybody. <laughs> Fundamental. <laughs> you have all failed to come to terms with the teachings of Marx. They were. Who says it's a theory of ideal types points the way. The way to where? I oh no. Uh, <laughs> to your usual tricks. Meyer and I have long disagreed. <laughs> it seems to me that what we need is a rational discussion 
and calm is deliberation. <laughs> Only in this way can we truly appreciate the implications of this surface, innovative approach to science. <laughs> I have a point of doctrine that you should really hear. Attempt a refutation, but you will not come near. I call myself a liberal, but not from days of yore. I say all things differently than those who came before. A liberal anyone can be. But in vain alone the reason see. I know this cause marginal utility sheds proper light on economy. I know this cause marginal utility sheds light on economy. We cannot do without Or else we're really crippled Cause nothing else works out I therefore keep my values At a distant sense But he who thinks without them In my view has no chance I state my values in black ink So that you will know just what I I know this has marginal utility, sheds proper light on economy. I know this has marginal utility, sheds light on economy. That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. I say my values in black ink so that you will know just what I think. Everybody knows it by now, right? I know this cause marginal utility Shreds from the light on the economy I know this cause marginal utility Shreds light on the economy Let me attempt to shed even more light on the problem. Perhaps I'll write about this someday, but I suspect that the root of the difference lies in method. We are Austrians, whereas Meyer holds too tightly to the teachings of the German historical school. You don't mean the smaller right. <laughs> oh, let it for inspection, that is the confection, sure to feed a fire and render law. So we're of this way, proceeding in this way, provide a mechanism without flaw. And though the thinking's brittle, the work will not be little. Gratitude we feel and will express. But such a data set theory will not beget an effort of this kind invite redress. <laughs> well, at least I'm not being singled out. In fact, I suspect we have an even more formidable enemy in our midst. Don't say it. The <laughs> Some claim another thesis. Science has one real basis, natural value at its very core. Should you not comprehend no speculation, then as all your work will soon be out the door. Now, as to values, meaning it wants intervening. Pretexts shimmer, but they shed their light. This leads to sadly lacking the veil of truth, but cracking. For real theory, there's no hope in sight. This is well-trod territory, isn't it, gentlemen? Let us all move on to greener pastures and agree 
Mises is our true teacher. Let us raise a glass to our host. Here, here. But with Professor Mises' seminar that teases thoughts of truth from those who love retort, thinking begins at seven and last till nearly left, but certainty supply is never short. For all ears and suspension, everyone's attention turned to him with wisdom non parallel with knowledge apodictic, <laughs> better looms realistic. Theory alone cannot our hunger quell. Very well said. <laughs> you know what I think unites all Anthony-Dessians? In their hearts, they love the state. <laughs> That's true. Remember that story of the two grenadiers returning from the war to Russia? Here of Napoleon's death. One was so, so distraught he killed himself. Good riddance, I say. <laughs> <laughs> he was my brother. <laughs> in any case, wasn't that story told in a song? Yes, Felix. <laughs> yes, Felix. And then Napoleon haunts his grave, so the story goes anyway. And I know uh, what you are thinking. We I all. <laughs> We all have leaders we admire. It's just that <coughs> ours are not statesmen, but intellectual. Ah, like my own beloved teacher, Eugen von Höllenbarberg. Let's imagine a scenario. <laughs> An Austrian time was supposed to Germany in hopes of joining the Nazis. But instead, he lying to the marginal utility of the dead. An economist moved to Germany, a learned position to pursue. This should have been a certainty, for in vain he learned a thing or two. But the good man learned the tragic tale, marginal utility, and it was deceased. Its followers lamented the school's corruption that doesn't, wouldn't increase. Our economist cried bitterly, oh, for the terrible news. Oh, that life hadn't been granted me, gone to the dogs is my muse. My books, what to become of them? The editions are printed, but no demand. I might well burn them straight away. Wisdom's met its final stand. Dishonor with its death nail sounding. And my friend fate betrays me. And world protest with pride abounding. I've got Harry Carey to save me. I shall not do it hastily. This would be no friend to reason. I exchange my life here justifiably for a sacrifice knows its season. From the treasury of Manger's works, I lay a volume on my breast. Now pen in hand, my dagger dear, within my soul may find its rest. And so I still lie and wait, like my books remaindered and dusty. But hark, now complimentary goods, they cry for a battle loud and lusty. Boom, Bavik advances over my grave, polemics and lightning and thunder. Polemics and lightning and thunder, and I rise up first, my enclave. Put not marginal utility asunder. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, Mr. Sweezy from Boston <laughs> and Mr. Stonier from across the chair. How good, how good you could come to bid us a farewell. <laughs> Ah, what fun 
memories you see months and months and months and months talking about really the same two things. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got them yet? Choice <laughs> takes place on the margin. That's, That's it! it. <laughs> uh, uh, values are subjective. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> was not in vain. Mr. Sweezy came from Boston, didn't worry what it cost him, learned to flame with one desire, gained some knowledge of his thinking, and prevent his mind from shrinking far beyond his local shrine. Mr. Sweezy had many questions, but was offered one suggestion. Judgments on the margin value small and values large can up and change as life unfolds. Oh, now I am smart as ever. Squeezy called with great endeavor. I'll go home and you will see. <laughs> Agitation, I'll be rousing. Very well done. Teach this Harvard sons of uh, Englishmen <laughs> <laughs> what they need to learn. Bye bye, Mr. Sonier. Bye bye. 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 And to pick it, all decisions made that day. All for numbers, formulations, proceeds of death, operations, foregone choices, hell at bay. Feeling crazy, our mistress easy, noted that it can't be breezy, naming what's of value true. Ah, it's not that complicated. Values can't be calculated. People do just what they do. <laughs> Mr. Stonier spoke out at long last, spouting notions in sharp contrast to the theories here is seen. I was taught to be suspicious. Such free thinking is capricious. Ah, but darling, what a scream. <laughs> oh my God. Sadly, lacking an understanding, swords of knowledge I'll be branding when I come back in the fall. Seeking answers to my queries, cutting insights, exchanges, merry wisdom plenty for us all. Grateful for our affiliation, raise a glass in celebration of our guests and promotion. But be with them on their journey, much success is every journey. Boom. And you. <laughs> So long, so long, <laughs> so long as we're on the subject of departures, I do have an announcement. <clears throat> I have been offered a position in Geneva. Given the political outlook in Austria, it does seem best that I should accept it. <gasps> <laughs> Dear Mises, you are the center of our circle. <laughs> what does one do? What happens to a circle when the center leaves? <laughs> <laughs> Until we know for sure, let's only think of it as theory. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the circle grieves so when its center starts to saunter. Its circumference feels empty, disheartened and low. Let our crises here to ponder. Brady, I are left to wonder. Brady, I are left to wonder.